self-worth sometimes is wrapped up in what you are achieving and how well you are doing at something by some external metric of success. Either you double down because you want to prove to yourself and maybe even prove to others that you will make it, right? Or you'll retreat back because you can't, or you don't want to handle the negative emotions that come with potentially not getting those. Forgetting that all of these other external factors are now in play now that you're in the real world. Hey guys, it's Adama if you're new here. And if you're returning, well, you can't be returning to this podcast. This is the first time I've ever done this, but you maybe you know my channel and all sorts. But um, yes, I've decided that I'm going to start a podcast. This is kind of my, my beta test um, and there's no name for it. <laughs> there's no real format, but... We're just going to kind of talk and explore some ideas, I think, in a lot more depth. And I'd like to be a bit more open and um, just share a bit more. But I wanted to start off by talking about something that's affected me quite a lot this year. And I think from the people I've spoken to, it may be, you know, irking them a bit too or, you know, stopping them from achieving what they want and just actually also enjoying life. Um, and it's to do with self-doubt, external metrics of success and what I'm calling the the academic curse. So... I guess, where did this all come from? I have been on YouTube for three years now, and I want to be completely honest and open with you guys. I thought I'd be a lot further than I am. And this kind of lack of perceived progress, I think, has taken a hit. It's making an, an impact on me and how I show up sometimes on YouTube. And the thing is, whilst this this isn't really specific to YouTube, though, because I've noticed this in different aspects of my life, right, that when I'm achieving things or outward metrics of success are positive, I'm also happy and positive. And when they are negative, I'm also quite negative and down and also self self inflicting of that kind of negative energy, like directing it towards myself. And perhaps this resonates with you as well. Like you have this feeling of that your almost self-worth sometimes is wrapped up in what you are achieving and how well you are doing at something by some external metric of success. Now, so I was trying to go back and forth with this and work out like why I was thinking what I was thinking and where it may stem from. And <laughs> amongst a lot of other things, I feel like I pinpointed a really major place where this kind of effect had had stemmed from and it was school. And I've spoken briefly on this channel about school before and the linear system, but, and I love school, by the way, like I used to stay till 6 p.m. sometimes with my friend, like they're not what we do until six, school finished at three. Why would we, st most kids are trying to run out of school. We were literally still there. But um, yeah, that that is where I think my tying my self-worth almost <laughs> or my feelings to my achievements started um, and really kind of just spiraled. Because I was academically successful as well, it worked. It worked in the linear model. But as soon as I started like moving past that and going into <laughs> the big bad world, basically, where I say bad, I don't really mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> um, I realized that this is taking this idea about life here is catastrophic because it will honestly stop you from moving forward in so many different ways, but also just being able to feel genuine joy or like even be present in moments because when your your feelings or your sense of self-worth are tied to an achievement as soon as that achievement has been kind of collected if you like you're now back down and it's time to go for the next thing and so you're in an eternal loop of hmm I need the next thing which is both good and bad like I would think this this particular trait is one of a lot of successful people the need for the next thing but it's also can be detrimental in a sense that if you never allow yourself to feel satisfied or, you know, big yourself up for something, then how long can you sustain this effectively? So going back to this idea of, you know, tying your, your feelings to your outward metrics, whether it be, like I said, for work or for something like YouTube. And I realize it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you can do one of two things. And I've noticed that about myself when things go wrong. Either you double down because you want to prove to yourself and maybe even prove to others that you will make it right or you'll retreat back because you can't or you don't want to handle the negative emotions that come with potentially not getting those outward measures of success. And you can see why down that route, well, then you never get closer to where you want because you're kind of just throwing yourself like off off the path 
before you even allowed yourself to really get there because you thought X amount of energy in would lead to, you know, Y amount of outputs out. But the thing is, and why I think this is such a complex idea is because we can just say your numbers don't matter. Like it doesn't matter the number of subscribers you've got. It doesn't matter the, <laughs> in the numbers of line of code you write at work or, you know, the salary. But metrics are a representation of something, right? So they're not completely useless because we can say that perhaps the number of subscribers or number of viewers I get on my videos is a, you know, a metric that reflects how many people are interested or find my content useful. So when that goes down, you can see why it's not completely outrageous for me to suggest, well, I'm not being as helpful as I once was, or I'm not as helpful as I could be. Um, but once you realize and like actually accept that these metrics are only a model, they're only like a representation of something, but they are void of context. They don't have any excessive or external information about that particular detail. So this is when it becomes dangerous because if you're tying your self-worth or your value as an individual or what you bring to the table or what you even bring to society to these metrics that are not directly linked to your just work, they're, they're linked to so many things, you, you can cut yourself short. And that's, I think, at times what I've done. Okay, so then bringing this back to practical steps, because like, how can one use this sort of information um, to kind of get further and start to bring back that, not the zest of to what you do, but like fulfillment at the same time as wanting to get better and wanting to progress, because I think I'm never going to be able to, and I don't want to remove that from my character, the desire to be the best version of myself or the best at what I do, whatever it is. I'm not against that part of me, um, but, it links back to something that goes with goal setting. And that's what I want to focus here in this practical step. And there is a push when you're setting goals in um, the most optimized way to move towards action oriented goals versus outcome oriented goals, if you'd like. And this is something that I really want to take with me into the new year, because I think that's probably something missing from my like my toolbox. And what this means is instead of, say, looking at I want 50, 100,000 subscribers by this point. Instead, I want to consistently put out one video a week or two videos a week or say at work instead of, you know, I want to be <laughs> close on 500 sales in a certain period of time. Instead, it's I want to, you know, make this amount of sales call a week. So these things are different in a sense that one is heavily influenced by a number of factors that you can't always control. And the other is closely or more closely tied to you and your actions and the characteristics of yourself. And the beauty of this is if we were just kind of like visualizing this in the first kind of goal setup or the one that I sometimes use where here is the metric, like we're just going to use subscribers um, and here is me. And if that doesn't do well, then it's a direct impact on me. Whereas in the other model where we put an action in between it. So now it's me. And I'm going to perform this action over here, which is going to be upload once a week, which will impact these metrics. And so suddenly you've kind of broken that that link between you, that that direct link between you and this external metric. And instead, you have linked it to something that's more closely reflective to you and your strengths and your weaknesses. And still it's outward, so it's not perfect. But think about it. If I then don't upload once a week, right now, then I can start to unpack. Why am I not able to do that? Is, do I have an issue with self-discipline? Do I have an issue with planning? Do I have an issue with, you know, idea generation? Do I have an issue with editing? Um, what What is it in that particular uh, line of field or in that path that is stopping me from achieving that? Versus, you know, I'm no good at YouTube because I didn't get this many subscribers. And so I think this is a really powerful way of looking at things because it's more likely to keep you on track because... You're not waiting for all these external things, but also it's just more useful in reviewing and coming back and trying to be better. So that's that's a really powerful thing. And I think making that one step into how you think about success or how you think about your journey and your systems can make such a big difference in how you feel about everything and how you feel about the goals you're trying to achieve. Moving on from that a little bit is if you've watched my video on self-doubt uh, that I did, I think maybe it's a year ago now, maybe a few months um, I spoke about some of the questions that I like to go through when I'm feeling these, these feelings of self-doubt or that the metrics are not adding up to what I think I should be or where I should be. Um, and it's really important that I remind myself as well, um, that 
this is like an ongoing process because it's quite easy to think, oh, I've got like the 10 steps now. Um, I've done them once and that's it. But like a lot of these tools that we have require repetitive use to be effective. And this is one thing that I can say about these questions that I've formulated over the years. And I kind of want to do this with you guys now um, in reference. I'm just going to use my YouTube example here to remind myself, but also illustrate potentially to you guys how useful this can be if you are feeling the same about something in your life whatever it is and yeah let's, let's just start so the first question is what have I achieved so far now this particular question is really key to my people who are like hypercritical of themselves and you never allow yourself to marvel in your success or your achievements and you don't reflect upon them all right so taking the time to step back and say how far have I come? Like, what have I already achieved? Um, and in in this case, it's almost having 50,000 people subscribe to my channel already. Like, that's 50,000 human beings who said at some point during my last three years, I like what she's saying enough or I find it useful enough that I'm going to press subscribe. Or like, I have videos that have a thousand views, videos that have a couple of hundred thousand views. Each of those is an individual who's decided to take the time out to click on one of my videos and then watch it, whether they watch it in part or full. And so I think just doing that is a good way to keep you grounded um, and to stop you from spiraling into like that endless loop of, yeah, but what's next? Yeah, but what's next? Because it's fine to want more, like I said, and that's always going to be a characteristic of mine to like want to improve. But not ever forgetting that you must have come somewhere. Like I don't care what you're doing or where you think you are, you've taken at least a step towards, you know, your goal at the moment, even if the first step was just conceptualizing it, or maybe you started planning, or maybe you've actually taken the first step towards it, or the second step, right, for people who are learning to code, right, like maybe you've, you've written your first line of code, your hello world, or you've already done something, so um, using that as a foundation is really important, and something again that I have to keep reminding myself of, <laughs> damn it, it's hard, um, the second question is, is this genuine doubt or am I being impatient? Now, this is where I, this com question is a little bit more complex, I think. Well, it's not, but maybe I'm pretending it's in my head. But like, in the case of YouTube, I think it may be a little bit of both, but really it's, the, it's impatience. But it's because I have allowed myself to become, not entangled, but I've allowed myself to become attached to a particular model of how time should go and how things should progress through time and how my success should look and again I think a lot of it links back to school where I knew that if I put this amount of work in in an x amount of space of time I would get the output I want or it's highly likely I would get the output I want that's not the same with a lot of other things right like maybe you are somewhere in your in your journey in career your tech journey I don't know maybe your product manager whatever you are and you thought you'd be further by now because you were supposed to be, I did X, Y, B, and Z, and I'm not where I expected to be. Forgetting that all of these other external factors are now in play now that you're in the real world. Um, and so the timeline is a really important feature of understanding your path and your systems. Because if you have the correct timeline, or if you have a timeline that makes sense, or at least is even open, then you can continue to progress. But if you thought that it was going to be one year before you was like a million subs or making a million pounds or you know getting a million lines of code then you're going to have problems and you're going to see yourself as failing prematurely effectively because well if my deadline was tomorrow and I didn't make it then I failed whereas if my deadline was hmm, I don't know I'll give this a few years maybe I'll give this five years um, and I'll just see I'll learn about my timeline as I go along I'll be open to understanding and interpreting it um, so yeah I think for me it's ultimately impatience but kind of stemming from an, a lack of understanding about timelines in the real world um, and how much control you have over certain timelines. Some of them you have a lot more control over and you can dictate the direction a bit more and others you kind of can't. I'm going to take a sip of this coffee because I feel like I'm talking a lot. Ooh. The third question is, do I have a clearly defined plan rooted in data? Um, hmm, how do I answer this question? I think my plan has always been in flux. Um, and I think that's okay. I recently did like a YouTube short on this quote that I'd heard and it was like, plans are useless, but planning is everything. 
And at first, that sounds like it's like, it, that doesn't make sense. Like those two statements seem in contradiction of each other, but they are actually not. And the reason being is because the planet itself is allowed to be in flux. It's allowed to move because like we've established, the real world is always changing and the context is always changing. Right? But the act of planning in itself, that's where I think things are most powerful. Um, and it links, like I've said before, to identity creation, because even in that act of planning, you are already cultivating the identity that you want, uh, the person that you want to be. So am I the type of person who does a YouTube video every week without fail? Right? Am I that person? Um, and throughout my planning process, have I you know, depicted that person right? when I'm thinking about what it takes to be that person? And even if, say, for some unforeseen circumstance, I can't make it one week, just, you know, something catastrophic, God forbid. But um, that doesn't mean that the next week I won't be back. Right. And it's that kind of identity creation that increases your chances of success long term and allows you to bounce back more. So this clearly defined plan rooted in data is still really important, I think. And data driven decisions is something that is a very powerful tool to use. And it's something that I kind of you learn throughout uni and then I learned a bit in the tech world and stuff like that but having a clearly defined plan that you sat down and worked through I think that's actually the powerful bit in this so yeah do I have a clearly defined plan rooted in data somewhat so I think now I do a a bit more to be honest my plan is literally to be authentically me show up now and show up consistently so yeah (laughs) but I guess we can break that one down and I can I can take some time out to to work on that one a bit more have I drifted from my why? This is a really intense question, I think. And it can force you to come to some realities about what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. So if you're saying work more, actually, no, let's go back to, to my example. Let's let's keep the focus here on me. Look, look at me trying to shift it already. Wow. Incredible. Um, have I drifted from my why? Yes and no, I think. Ultimately, I started my channel because I wanted like um, <laughs> I wanted to see stuff that younger me would be able to resonate with and want to know. And then it kind of evolved into not necessarily younger me, like any version of me, whether I'm a teenager, whether I'm in my mid 20s like I am now or, you know, future future me would get value and potentially a bit of entertainment from. And so I don't think I've actually changed in that sense I think that still drives why I show up whether I get views of this amount or that amount however I think through wanting to grow and wanting to reach more people the strategy side of things can kind of overpower sometimes your why or at least veer your why into a direction that's not quite where you wanted it and again even your why I think is allowed to change like nothing is stagnant and I think this is a concept in itself that a lot of us have to accept is that you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to evolve. And in fact, if you're not evolving and changing your mind, uh, I'm kind of, I'm a bit wary of you. If you have the same ideas about life at, you know, this age of say mid twenties as you did in your mid teens, I'm not saying it's red flags, but I'm saying it's red flags. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you're allowed to change your why, but if you're veering off for, for reasons that may, may not sit right with you all the time or that they're they're stopping you from again showing up in your most authentic self then then you have to start to think about "Mm, well how can I get back on that track that is more aligned with my why um and feeling good about the stuff that you put out uh sorry so like this is a bit different for me because I feel like I'm actually just being able to have a conversation and speak honestly and openly about a lot of ideas that come to my head as I'm even speaking versus like I think through my ideas before and then do my videos let's move on to the next question the final question is have I taken enough action this is for me is a categorical no in terms of my youtube channel and I have to be honest with myself I should have been uploading every single week I should have been delivering valuable information every week like I initially set out to do and I haven't been doing that and in part it's because of the things I've said I've let every time an output wasn't exactly as I expected knock me back down into "Mm, all right well I'm just not going to post or letting my feelings which you know dictate almost everything we do overpower you know the plan that I set out for myself um and this is why like self-discipline trumps motivation sometimes 
And that's not to say, you know, just doing videos for the sake of it, because I don't really believe in that either. Like, I wouldn't just want to do a video and I look back at it and like, what on earth did you do that for? Like, this is useless. Um, but at the same time, thinking that if you make a commitment to do it, then set your systems up so that you can do it. Even if that means that you have lots of, you have an idea day, everything's flowing. And so you write as many ideas down as possible. Um, and yeah, but this, sorry, this isn't a how to about YouTube, but um, I just wanted to illustrate, like, those are the five questions, by the way, how you can use something like this to, to start to explore some of your, your own understandings of, and kind of concepts of how the world is working and how you should be moving through it. And assumptions about the world, like I assumed that I should be further than I am, or I assumed that I would be somewhere, and I didn't really have the information or understanding of things. I was just going, well, school was like this, or everything else in my life is like this. Then this should be like this, right? And that's just not the case. You, like I said, you may not actually be interested in content creation, but I, I hope you can see how this could filter into so many different elements of life. One thing I wanted to speak about, um, and talk about, like on this channel at some point, is new job anxiety, because I think this self-doubt and this outward metric kind of thing is a real big issue when you have new jobs especially if you're relatively early in your career because you may not have had enough jobs yet to realize that new job anxiety is kind of normal actually and or that new job stumbling is completely normal and so you may be like 24 just started your first job like after uni and thinking I don't know what's going on and then you realize yeah you just got here you're not supposed to know what's going on um, and that's kind of like the idea of is this genuine doubt or impatience? Like, are you just trying to be the top guy day one? <laughs> and you, like I said, you don't even have your passwords yet. Um, so yeah, it can filter around to so many different aspects of life. So I hope that you can use these questions and the, the ideas about goal setting to help you if you're feeling a certain type of way. And I hope you kind of enjoyed this. I'm literally going to kind of end it now, which is, I don't know how long I've been recording this for. But like I said, this was a tester just to see how this would work. And if you guys even like this kind of content or this style of me um, sharing with you guys and kind of working through ideas, um, it's kind of, I think it's a more vulnerable me. Like I think I'm, I'm opening up a little bit more. And I think a lot of the time I like to come to you guys once I've sorted it all out, right? Um, once I have you know, become YouTube famous or not YouTube famous because actually fame is one thing that makes me kind of uncomfortable, but that's a whole nother thing in itself. But like once I've achieved these outward metrics of success um, and then I can tell you guys like I'm on the other side now, here's what I learned. But I think there's definitely value in sharing as you're going along, like as you stumble and you work things out and you stumble and you work things out, um, sharing in that journey and just being open to that. Because I was watching somebody who was sharing about, you know, now I'm on the other side. And it was a really valuable video. And I was like, but I don't want to wait for years or months or weeks or however long it's going to take before I start to share what I know and what I learn. I want to share it now. And so I think this is where the podcast is going to come in and be really useful for us to work through ideas kind of together. So, yeah, that's it. I would really love to know what you think about this. So please leave a comment. Please let me know how this is. Um, let me know any ideas you have. For firstly the name what are we calling this um and also ideas things that you want me to talk about um perhaps there are things that you've seen on my channel that you'd like me to expand on or there are different ideas that you would like me to cover topics that we can discuss um and i'd really like if there was a dialogue like in the comment section how do you feel about all this stuff but um yeah and yeah thank you for listening especially if you've made it this far you're a real one <laughs>